Hello everyone, it's Robert Evans and we are back with another episode of the stories behind the image. So again, if you haven't seen any of these, these stories are stories that behind images that I've taken over my 25 plus year career. I created this series, there's about eight of them, this is the fifth one, uh, so that you know during this time when we're all home, just something mindless, uh, something educational but easy to watch. So anyway, let's jump in. All right, so story behind the image, uh, episode number five. If this is your first time here watching The Pixel Show, welcome. Uh, here's some of our other episodes that are on the channel. I'd love you to go back, watch, and like every YouTuber, if you love it, uh, like it. If you love it, subscribe. Uh, and let me know what you think. Comments are always welcome. I try to get back to everyone. Uh, so here we go. So this very first image uh, was an image that I took at a wedding just a couple of years ago. Um, and it was actually kind of towards the end of the night. And um, I wanted to do a shot in front of this barn. So um, I put the couple back by the barn and I took a few uh, standard pictures, if you will, you know, of the couple looking. And, uh, and I said, hey, you guys, why don't you, why don't you dance or do something that you want to do? And so the two of them, like literally from, they were closer to the barn and they kept walking towards me. Uh, so as they walked towards me, they danced and they, it was just really cute. Um, it was spontaneous other than the, the initial of me asking them to dance. Uh, and this is the image that I got from it. Really great image that I was happy with. So not a, not a dramatic story, but I think a lesson there for those of you that shoot weddings. Um, you know, I always tell my couples to, to do stuff and I get them close to what I want them to do, but then I sort of watch them and let them go. And sometimes there's really great moments that come out of those. So speaking of stories, this guy, as you can't tell, this is me. I mentioned, uh, I think right off the top of the show that I've been shooting weddings a long time. I shot my very first wedding. Um, in 1989 and hold on a second I'm going to get you back to this split screen view of me so you could see me um, and so here I am then and now I don't know if this was this was probably at least 10 years into my career um, so I started to shot my first wedding in 1989 and back in the day as you can see we shot medium format we shot Hasselblad as a matter of fact if you shot 35 millimeter back then you weren't even considered to be a, a reputable or a good wedding photographer. So I just sort of fun to throw that in there. Um, and let's move on. So this next image, uh, this image right here, I took in London, England. And uh, this is film. Uh, so I don't remember what year this was. I think it was right around 2002. Um, this was such a great trip. This was at a, a castle called um, uh, Castle Ashby in Northampton, England. It looks very much like the um, castle for uh, the show. Why, why am I blanking on that show? Um, you know, the super popular PBS show. Anyway, the castle looked like that. Um, and... I had a really great bride and groom. It was only about uh, 20, 30 guests. It was on Valentine's Day. Uh, the interesting story with this is a little bit of a backstory, uh, and I'll try to keep it short, is that I had a client that I was actually wanting, uh, my studio was in LA, I had a studio in the Valley, and there was a client that was wanting to hire me for a Beverly Hills hotel wedding. And uh, long story, the dad was an entertainment attorney, and he kept ripping my contracts to shreds, and wanted to change this and wanted to change that. And after about two rounds of changes, I changed him at first, you know, with the, with the anticipation of like, well, I could really make this guy happy. Um, but uh, after a while, I was a little bit um, disillusioned in that I was like, I'm not going to make this happy. And I was afraid what was going to happen afterwards. And so they were finally going to give me the deposit. And, and I hadn't run it. Like the, the mom had called and I hadn't called back. And then... Uh, a couple of days, uh, right as I needed to call her back, she called again and said, you know, Robert, we really need to get this going. You know, what's going on? Call me back. 
And that day I got a call for this wedding and uh, I told the groom a little bit of the story and I said, you know, if you're serious about hiring me, I would love to do it, but I said, I have to turn this other wedding down. He came in that night and uh, it all worked out in the end. And, and this wedding again was such a fairy tale, beautiful castle. This was just like the garden house. Um, I had so much fun shooting this couple and uh, I went along with a couple of videographer, uh, another photographer friend of mine, Krista Yanker and um, uh, Doug Brannigan. Um, we all went on this trip. I believe Yanker, you went with me on this. I don't know, maybe I'm getting too old and I can't remember. But anyway, uh, my videographer friend, Doug Brannigan, who recently passed away, uh, very sad, but I have fond memories of you from this trip and I will never forget those. This image, uh, this is actually kind of a family friend of ours. Uh, my wife's father has a little hobby farm down in Iowa and uh, this is one of his neighbors. His name's Ron and uh, Ron's into aviation and, and Ron has the, the most gentle personality and he's such a unique personality and uh, this is in his airport hangar at his, where he has his little plane stored and he was just sitting there and of course I always keep a camera with me and uh, Ron was sitting there. And so I just started snapping photos of him um, just in the, he's always been generous and I just love this portrait. It's kind of more of a personal thing for me, uh, but Ron is such a great guy. I took a few other portraits of him around his tractors at his house and, and other things, but just really shows this man's personality. Now this image, so you might be wondering, uh, MC Hammer, for those of you that don't know who this is, and so um, I took this image of MC Hammer and the way this came about, uh, as, as you know, or maybe you don't know, I've done a bunch of celebrity weddings and it had nothing to do with that. Um, but I did have a friend uh, and a girl that I dated for a very short time and she was a graphic designer and I hadn't seen her in a long time and she called me up and she said, hey Robert, I'm doing graphic designs for uh, a movie, uh, The Fast and the Furious. And this happened to be Tokyo Drift, so for those of you who don't know. And basically, MC Hammer was going to be uh, in the background on the wall in a train station. So for those of you who have ever seen Tokyo Drift, I don't think I've ever even seen the movie myself. But he came into the studio, we shot it on a white background, um, and they had him with a bunch of different products. And, and things. So depending on what the ad was going to be, uh, this looks like a little movie camera at the time. We shot them with like uh, energy type drinks and, and tires and rims. It was really quite an interesting shoot. And he was a really fun guy. Um, and after the shoot was over, uh, this was all shot in my studio in LA. And after the shoot was all over, he really loved the in images. And he mentioned to me, he said, uh, he said, hey, I might want to use some of these on my new album cover. And, and, and while we were shooting, he was playing songs from his new album. Uh, and the album was called Look, Look, Look. And uh, I was like, great, yeah, I would love to do it. And, you know, was super excited about it. Well, some time went on. And, um, and so some time went on. And Susan called me one time and she said, hey, Robert. She's like, remember when MC Hammer was talking about uh, using your images and I said yeah 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 and she's like well I think there's something that that you ought to see and, and she showed me on iTunes at the time you know old school iTunes and there was an album out that he was promoting called look 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 with three of the images that I did from that shoot that he put on the cover without my permission and so of course I was like okay and uh I was realistic and cautious about it. I inquired to a couple of attorneys and they said, yeah, you probably could get some money, but um, I'm not sure what happened. We're jumping ahead there. Um, and so anyway, long story, I was going to wait and see if the album did any good and it didn't. And uh, he never really sold a lot of them. So I didn't go through the hassle and I just took it as a compliment and moved on with my life. All right, so the next image you got a little sneak peek at is this one. Let me make it big for you so you can see it larger. Uh, so this image was taken at the Oshkosh Air Show last summer. And in some of the previous episodes, I have showed those. Um, 
But this is a, a basically, as you can see it, a semi truck. It's called Shockwave, and they have a jet engine on the back of it. And this thing flies down the track. Uh, I took this with uh, the 402.8 G Master lens that I had with me for shooting some aviation. And I think it's just a beautiful, fun, different image, you know, a lot different than I would ever shoot in my portfolio. Um, but I mean, again, I like to say I'm a photographer. I don't like to class. I don't like to classify myself just as a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer. I'm a photographer, and uh, I can shoot a lot of what I want. So that's what that image is from. This image, uh, this image is uh, of my son uh, playing baseball and sliding into the base. So this was also taken uh, with the 400. And uh, the slide seems to be a little bit off, so I apologize about that, but you get the idea. So this image was taken with the 4028. Shortly after I got it, I took it to a game, and I took this image. Uh, I just love it because it kind of could be a stock image, right? It's like a kid sliding into a base, and you know he's almost touching the base. There's a little movement in it. Uh, it's really cool. So uh, that's kind of the story behind this one. Uh, this image. So let's go back to big so you can see it big. Uh, this image I took at a destination wedding that I was shooting uh, down in Mexico. This was uh, at the Four Seasons in Punta Mita. And uh, it was actually the night of the rehearsal dinner. And so I was down on the beach down below shooting the rehearsal dinner. And there was this hill that was just above where we were doing the rehearsal dinner. And uh, at the Four Seasons, they had one table up there and you could reserve that table and they'd serve you a meal. So it's like just you by yourself and a waiter and the waiter would walk across this long distance, you know, and, and bring your food. And uh, we got this amazing sunset. I mean, the whole sky was orange that night. And uh, so I shot this picture of this couple who I have no idea who they are, uh, but I've always loved this image. Um, you know, I wish of course that I could have uh, got them toasting maybe, uh, you know, you always think shoulda, coulda, woulda, but that never happened. I kind of kept an eye on them, but of course I also had a party to shoot. So this image, so this was shot uh, right around 2014, 2015, I think, the 2015 season. Um, uh, I got on the field at a Minnesota Vikings game here in Minnesota. Um, before they had moved into U.S. Bank Stadium, uh, so they were playing at TFC uh, at the college at the, at, at the University of Minnesota. And uh, so I was fairly new to Minnesota at that time. And I was going outside to shoot this game. And this happened to be, I think, the seventh coldest game that they'd ever played. It was like minus three, minus four outside the whole game. And I'd never spent that much time outside. And the other story behind this image is that is this image um, when I took this, this was taken with the Sony A6000 and then the lens was the 70 to 200 F4. So it was the original uh, Sony uh, 70 to 200 and an A6000. And the reason that I shot the A6000 at this game was because at the time the camera shot 11 frames a second and it was the fastest camera that I had. And it took amazing photos and I used it. So I was using this camera to shoot sports for my kids and stuff. But the funny part of it was you should have seen the looks that I got on the sidelines, you know, using this tiny little camera with this lens and, you know, other photographers kind of sneering at me and laughing a little bit. But it, it did intrigue some of them. And uh, they wanted to come up and ask me like what I was doing. But the other thing that I could do that they couldn't is I was wi fi images from my A6000, from my Sony A6000 to my phone. And then I was showing them, I was showing them the results of what I was getting with this tiny little camera. And they were super impressed. Um, I, several guys stopped me and asked about it. Uh, but anyway, from my own experience, it was the first time on the sidelines for an NFL game. And I loved it. And, and it was great, you know, just shooting sports and, and sort of enjoying that. Um, I'm sort of itching to get back and do it. I haven't been able to get back on the field at U.S. Bank, but I, I keep trying. All right, so let's go on. Switch it up so it's a little bigger. So you guys know who this is? Anybody? So this is Fred Willard, um, and he's a character actor, and he's been in a lot of things and a lot of movies. And uh, back when I was in L.A. and I had my studio in L.A., I used to shoot a lot of uh, 
kind of these style of shoots for a little local paper uh, called the Universal, uh, the Studio City Sun, the Encino Sun, the Sherman Oaks Sun. So it was a little local community newspaper. And uh, they would give me all, I did a lot of like B and C celebrity stuff. Um, and I'd get these like fun little assignments. And the best part about this was that I could do whatever I wanted. They never gave me any guidelines. They said, just go shoot the person. Uh, so I had, this was in Fred Willard's home and, and he and I had fun together. And uh, I saw that portrait. He was kind of sitting there anyway. And then I saw the magnifying glass and I said, hey, pick up the magnifying glass. And so I framed it and did the composition so that it was sort of him uh, with the, and he was playing with the magnifying glass. And then I put uh, the other portrait behind him, which I believe that's from a movie, which one I don't know. If you know, put it in the comments. Um, and so it was fun. I got to shoot all sorts of, of people like between Fred Willard, I shot Danny Bonaducci that used to be on the Partridge family. Um, Hector Elizondo, I shot him on set uh, at Princess Bride, I think, at Universal. I think that's the movie he was shooting. Um, the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. Um, why am I thinking he's a famous actor too? But, uh, you know, with him, uh, I he has a... a, a slide in his backyard uh, uh dude, i can't even think today um and anyway we got to go down his slide on on the wire and it was fun i got to do all sorts of fun stuff so it kind of reminds me of those days so this image get it back big for you again this image um i have a few portrait clients that live in different places the, this is in northern california and uh for several years um i've done her kids portraits these are triplets um it's a two boys and a girl and uh this was an area that we would go to and i really just uh thought this really showed their personalities and though you don't see their faces um but what i loved about it of course is the depth of the scenery the, the light and all of them carrying sticks and really when you do portraits like this and and some of my other clients that i do this for you know you basically are chasing the kids around and, and trying to make something work uh, so I always say photography is a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill. And so here, um, you know, I think you have to have the vision. And, but then, you know, we got lucky with just their body positionings, the light, you know. Of course, I chose the composition. Um, but this is kind of one of the cooler portraits, I think, I've kids, of kids that I've done where you actually don't see their faces. Uh, this image... I shot last summer um, at a job that I was doing. I, I was hired to do a job on Mackinac Island, which is uh, in Michigan. It's where Lake Superior and Huron touch, I believe. Uh, it's a very, it's a little island. The cool thing about this island is uh, that there are uh, no cars allowed on the island, so it's horse and carriage and bicycles everywhere. And this particular image was taken uh, at the restaurant. Uh, it's called The Woods, and The Woods is part of um, the big hotel that's on the island. And what this was, uh, was um, actually the story that I heard. It was the playhouse that the, the person who built, the guy who built the uh, hotel back in the day, um, it was for his kids. So this little bowling alley was created for his children, and it's just off the bar uh, so when you go in there, um, you can, you know, pick up these balls and do that. And this guy was uh, bowling and I just liked it. You know, I slowed down the shutter speed a little bit so I could get a little movement. You sort of see the twist of his body. Um, but I love that his foot still, uh, the ball is more or less still. You see it, you can see the pins over his head. I believe I shot this with a 24-1-4 G Master lens. Um, and I think the movement in this shot really, really makes a difference in the shot as opposed to if I just snapped a picture of him bowling. And I made it black and white because I really thought it fit the environment better. The walls were a very pretty uh, lime green. Okay. So this image uh, was an image... This was on my very, very first trip to Europe. I went to Europe on my own. I want to say it was right around 1994. 
Um, I had just started Robert Evans Studios, um, and I'd had my business open for just shy of a year, and then I was going to take off for two weeks and go to Sweden. Um, but this was shot in Sweden, and the and uh, in an area of Sweden called Gamlastan, which is like the oldest part of Sweden. And uh, I, I love this because it was you know these probably middle school aged children uh, watching this older gentleman. Uh, play the violin and uh, these kids today you know who knows maybe some of them will <laughs> watch this show and and see themselves in this image um, but these kids you know this is 20 plus years later um, and uh, I just love it because I love that they're all sort of enthralled with him and and paying attention and the other thing that's amazing notice like back then no cell phones, so they're actually engaged in watching what's going on and feeling and experiencing the music instead of worried about taking pictures and putting it up on social media. So social media is great for some things, but I think uh, this image right here really helps you uh, go back to those times. And, uh, you know, it, I think it really makes you think and wonder. And I think that's the great thing about photography is that I can look at an image, you can look at an image, and even if you weren't there, you can pretend or put whatever memory or, or think whatever you think, oh, what was going on in those kids' mind, uh, what song was he playing, you know, all those things. So um, that's the really great thing about a photograph. This image is from a wedding that I did, and I just love it because it's a little bit unusual. It happened to be... Uh, behind the bride at the time and she started toasting and I was really just a quick grab and that's the one thing that I love about I keep my Sony cameras on continuous autofocus and I just you know push the shutter and and got lucky so again love the depth of field that it's focused uh, on the one bridesmaid and really the two at the top and bottom are the most in focus and then the other one goes out of focus and of course the bride's out of focus but it's just an unusual image, and that's one thing at weddings. I really try to capture something different. Yes, a lot of what we do when we shoot weddings can be the same, uh, but I am always looking for something different, looking for a new way to see it differently, um, and just capture an image like that, that that is just unique and fun and you know once in a lifetime. I mean, I'm never going to duplicate that again at any wedding unless I really choreographed it and tried to set it up, and it's still probably wouldn't be as good as this image. Okay. And the last image, if you're still here, thank you so much for hanging around. Everybody has seen this sign in their lives before, I'm pretty sure. If you have not, you need to get out a little bit more. Um, so the story behind this image, uh, back right around, it was in 94, kind of around that time too, same right around the time I started my own business. Again, I was still shooting Hasselblad. I did not switch to digital until 2003. Um, and I rented a fisheye lens for the Hasselblad because there was a downtown shot that I was sort of eyeing that I wanted to shoot. And, and I got the permission and I got on the building and I shot a shot of downtown LA. But then I had this other vision that I wanted to climb all the way up to the Hollywood sign and use a fisheye lens and distort it and take a picture of the Hollywood sign that no one's ever seen before. Yes, we've all seen images, but I bet you've never seen a shot like this. Um, so as you see, I, I climbed up there and uh, I got my image. And uh, But the story behind this is that because I went up there, um, I got a <laughs> trespassing ticket um, for going up to the Hollywood sign because there's high, you know, we drove up as far as we could, but there's signs everywhere that say no trespassing. But of course I ignored them because I wanted to get my picture. And so uh, there's cameras up there. Um, so there was, I could actually hear uh, recordings going off saying, please go down the hill, the rangers are waiting for you and you are trespassing. And, and I was like, yeah, 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 no one's gonna be down there. But yes, they were. Um, and I did get a ticket uh, for trespassing. And another one of my good high school friends was with me, Brett. And at the time, Brett was trying to become a fireman, which he is today, uh, with, 
without any help from me, but he was so worried that this was going to ruin his chance to become a fireman. Um, and it did not, the long story, but uh, we ended up going to court and our, and luckily enough, like our names never came up on the day of court. And then the, the guy in the court said, well, that's not so easy. You're going to have to go upstairs and speak to the district attorney. And so we went upstairs and sat down and the guy came out, took us into his office. And, you know, I said, look, I was just up there taking photos. I wasn't graffitiing on your sign. And I'm speeding the story up because there's a lot more to it. But, uh, but he said, I could give you both, you know, $700 misdemeanor trespassing signs. It's illegal to be up there. You know, it's not just a ticket, it's misdemeanor, and you don't have that on your record. And, and, but he said, have a nice day. So somewhere I still have the tickets and the memory, but, you know, it was kind of one of those fun little stories um, that, you know, behind this image. And plus, it's a fun, unique image. Um, I've sold many of these over the years. Uh, I have a huge one in my studio, and I've sold seven or eight to clients, especially when I was in L.A., uh, to different directors and people in the business who uh, who loved the image. So that's it, you guys. I really appreciate you watching. This was episode five, the story behind the image. I am Robert Evans. I can't change my channel. Boom. There it is. So I'm coming out. I'm Robert Evans. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, uh, like, tell your friends. Thank you for being here.